गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर प्रीति सोनी एंड आई एम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन केमिस्ट्री इन गवर्नमेंट जी एन ए पी जी कॉलेज भाटापारा टूडे आई एम प्रेजेंट हियर टू डिलीवर अ लेक्चर ऑन कॉस्मेटिक एनालिसिस विच इज फ्रॉम एम एस सी फोर्थ सेमेस्टर केमिस्ट्री एंड इज ऑफ फोर्थ पेपर दैट इज इन्वायरमेंटल एंड एनालिसिस एंड फोर्थ यूनिट दैट इज कॉस्मेटिक क्लिनिकल एंड ड्रग एनालिसिस the first part is of cosmetic analysis which is which i am presenting here before you now first of all the cosmetic analysis introduction now the word cosmetic ye cosmetic word aisa hai jisse hum sabhi achhi tarah se parichit hain khas karke ladkiyan ya fir womens keh sakte hain waise to ladke bhi parichit hain but zyada used to hum ladkiyan hi hain so the cosmetic word is originated from greek word cosmetikos a greek word hai cosmetikos jiska matlab hota hai to adorn to prepare which is used for this purpose cosmetic word is originated from greek word cosmetikos which means to adorn and to prepare which is used for this purpose is known as cosmetics we can define the cosmetic as cosmetics are external preparation meant for to apply an external part to the body that is nails skin and hair for coloring covering softening cleaning nourishing waving setting mollification preservation removal and protection etc hum isko kai prakar se define kar sakte hain वैसे तो कॉस्मेटिक्स बहुत समझाने की ज़रूरत नहीं है कॉस्मेटिक कहते ही हमारे दिमाग में जो चीज़ें आती हैं वो हैं लिपस्टिक पाउडर क्रीम मेकअप पिट आफ्टर शेव लोशंस सोप्स शेविंग किट्स एट्सेट्रा सो वी कैन ऑल्सो डिफाइन इट एज अ कॉस्मेटिक इज एन आइटम इंटेंडेड टू बी रब्ड पोर्ड स्प्रिंकल्ड और स्प्रेड ऑन इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन टू और अदरवाइज अप्लाइड टू द ह्यूमन बॉडी और एनी पार्ट दे आर ऑफ फॉर क्लिनजिंग ब्यूटिफाइंग प्रमोटिंग अट्रैक्टिवनेस और एल्टरिंग द एपियरेंस नाउ ऑल दिस कॉस्मेटिक प्रिपरेशन हैज देर एप्लीकेशन फॉर लॉन्ग और शॉर्ट पीरियड्स टू ब्यूटिफाई द बॉडी as well as to keep the body healthy up to some extent and has psychological impact to other the active life of any cosmetic preparation begins the moment it is brought in contact with the skin hair teeth or nails and ends when it is removed or has evaporated men used leaves of vegetables and parts of animals whereas women used to wear colored stones and flowers around their neck and wrist gradually they start using colored earth ornaments on their face and body even bangles and necklaces made of pegged earth materials become very common among the people eye shadow were made of copper and are lamp black while red color was used for dyeing of hair nowadays cosmetics are considered as essential components in life they not only attract the people towards it but also impart psychological effects it has gained popularity in the last 3 4 decades and its use has been increased exponentially both in males and females examples of cosmetics the most popular cosmetics are hair dyes powders and creams skin care creams powders lotions lipstick nail polishes i and face makeup deodorants baby products hair colorants and sprays etc the cosmetic which are used for decorative purposes that is eyeliners rouge mascara face masking preparation etc and also carries the inherent risk of desirable side effects it may inhibit important physiological process chemically modify certain skin constituent for example in case of bleaching and coloring preparation and contribute towards their removal or even given rise to the certain allergic reactions now after introduction of cosmetics we will lead to the classification part there is variety of cosmetic preparations which are used and can be classified in different ways the cosmetics are classified according to reason first of all according to reason where it is used that is in skin hair nails teeth or eye first of all for skin 
पाउडर लिपस्टिक रूज क्रीम लोशन एंड सॉल्यूशन एट्सेट्रा फॉर हेयर्स शैम्पू कंडीशनर्स क्रीम्स ब्लीच कलरिंग प्रिपरेशन एट्सेट्रा फॉर नेल्स नेल लेकर्स लेकर्स रिमूवर्स कोल्ड क्रीम हिस्टोरिकली द कोल्ड क्रीम ऑल्सो नोन एज अर्जेंटम और सैरेटम रेफ्रिजरेंस फॉर टिथ्स पाउडर पेस्ट जेल एंड डी नाइट्रीफाइज एट्सेट्रा डेंट्रीफाइज एट्सेट्रा फॉर आईज आई लाइनर मस्कारा आई शेडो एंड आई ब्रो पेंसिल एट्सेट्रा नाउ द सेकेंड क्लासिफिकेशन इज अकॉर्डिंग टू द फंक्शन ऑफ कॉस्मेटिक प्रिपरेशन हाउ दे आर प्रिपेयर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इज इमोलियन प्रिपरेशन दैट इज कोल्ड क्रीम्स वैनिशिंग क्रीम्स फाउंडेशन क्रीम्स लोशंस एंड सॉल्यूशन एट्सेट्रा नाउ अकॉर्डिंग टू द क्लिनजिंग प्रिपरेशन क्रीम्स शैम्पूज एंड रिंसेज फॉर डेकोरेटिव प्रिपरेशन लिपस्टिक रूज आई लाइनर लेकर्स एंड ड्रेसिंग प्रिपरेशन फॉर डिओड्रेंट एंड एंटी परस्पिरेंट स्प्रे टेक्स स्टिक्स एंड माउथ वॉशेज फॉर प्रोटेक्टिव प्रिपरेशन क्रीम्स एंड पाउडर्स फॉर प्रिपरेशन फॉर एन्जॉयमेंट दैट इज सॉल्ट पाउडर्स ऑयल्स एंड मिल्स नाउ द थर्ड क्लासिफिकेशन इज अकॉर्डिंग टू कंपोजिशन ऑफ कॉस्मेटिक्स दैट इज पाउडर लोशंस इमल्शंस सॉल्यूशन सस्पेंशन क्रीम पेस्ट जेल एरोसोल स्टिक्स एंड पेंसिल्स नाउ द थर्ड टॉपिक टू कवर इन कॉस्मेटिक एनालिसिस इज इवेल्युएशन ऑफ कॉस्मेटिक मटेरियल्स how the cosmetic material is made it is made up of various types of chemical whether organic or inorganic like a variety of organic compounds and inorganic compounds comprise typical cosmetics typical organic compounds are modified natural oils and fats as well as a variety of petrochemical derived agents the inorganic compounds are processed minerals such as iron oxides talc and zinc oxide etc The oxides of zinc and iron are classified as pigments that is colorants for main more mainstream due to the fact that certain chemicals in some skin care products may be harmful if absorbed through the skin the products claimed to be the organic use should in the us be certified as usda organic the term cosmetic packaging is used for primary packaging and secondary packaging of cosmetic product primary packaging also called cosmetic container is housing the cosmetic product it is the direct contact with the cosmetic product secondary packaging is the outer wrapping of one or more several cosmetic container an important difference between primary and secondary packaging is that any information that is necessary to clarify the safety of the product must appear on the primary package otherwise much of the required information can appear on just the secondary packaging a wide variety of <coughs> cosmetics are available in the market so therefore the knowledge of various cosmetics and their relative applications are given in this lecture first of all the cosmetic product i am describing here is lipsticks because lipstick is the all time favorite for all ladies and the women world so the lipstick Lipstick is generally accepted essential and leading makeup device available in variety of luster and texture. It is composed essentially of a oil wax base stiff enough to form a stick with a staining dye dissolved or dispersed in the oil and pigment suspended therein suitable perfumed and flavored molded and enclosed in a case. the lipstick provides a convenient means of freshening the makeup lipstick imparts attractive color gloss and most appearance to the lips accentuating good points and distinguishing the defects the properly applied lipstick totally changes the apparent facial appearance it also prevents cracking and chafing of lips to lead bacterial infection wax mixture it also provides emollient action to the lips The formulation of lipstick consists of oil and wax mixture having desired melting and viscosity. The range of melting point choose for this mixture is 55 degree centigrade to 75 degree centigrade and most commonly used in 62 degree centigrade for hot climatic areas. It also contains bromo mixture to impart indelible stain and colors or pigments. The other ingredients which are used in lipstick formulation 
आर प्रिजर्वेटिव फ्रेगरेंस सरफेक्टेंट एंड स्टेबिलाइजर्स एम एल सी फायर्स एंड एंटी ऑक्सीडेंट्स एटसेट्रा नाउ द फॉर्मुलेशन ऑफ लिपस्टिक फॉर्मुलेशन मीन्स सूत्रीकरण सूत्रीकरण कैसे जिन केमिकल्स या जिस भी सामग्री की मदद से लिपस्टिक को बनाया जाता है वो कौन कौन से होते हैं और किस तरह से उनका फॉर्मूला तैयार किया जाता है ताकि कॉस्मेटिक के रूप में एक लिपस्टिक बनाया जा सके द लिपस्टिक बेस इज मेड बाय मिक्सिंग द ऑयल्स एंड वैक्सेस इन वेरिंग प्रपोर्शंस इन ऑर्डर टू ऑप्टेन अ डिजायरेबल विस्कोसिटी एंड मेल्टिंग पॉइंट नाउ द कंपोजिशन और द रॉ मटेरियल इन्वॉल्व इन द फॉर्मुलेशन ऑफ लिपस्टिक्स आर एज फॉलोज इनग्रीडियंट एग्जाम्पल द सॉलिड कंपोनेंट कंटेंस वैक्सेज द हाइड्रोकार्बन वैक्सेज वाइट बीज वैक्स द मिनरल वैक्सेज इंक्लूड ऑजोकेराइट वैक्स रिजाइन वैक्स द हार्ड वैक्सेज इंक्लूड कार्यूबा वैक्स कैंडिलिया वैक्स हार्ड पैराफिन द माइक्रो क्रिस्टलाइन वैक्सेज एंड द लिक्विड कंपोनेंट्स आर मिनरल ऑयल्स वेजिटेबल ऑयल्स कैस्टर ऑयल्स ब्यूटाइल स्टीरेट ग्लाइकोल वाटर सिलीकन फ्लूड्स आई पी एम दैट इज आइसोप्रोपाइल मिलिएट द सॉफ्टनिंग कंपोनेंट्स इट इज यूज एज एन हाइड्रोज लेनोलिन लेनोलिन कोकोआ बटर लेसिथिन पेट्रोलैटम एटसेट्रा द कलरिंग एजेंट्स यूज आर कर्माइन डाई स्टव स्टेन पिगमेंटेड स्टेन लेक्स एटसेट्रा पॉलिसेंट पिगमेंट्स ग्वानिन क्रिस्टल्स बिस्मत ऑक्सीक्लोराइड ओपेसिफाइंग एजेंट्स टाइटेनियम डाइऑक्साइड एटसेट्रा परफ्यूमरीज इंक्लूड रोज ऑयल सिनेमन ऑयल लेवेंडर ऑयल एटसेट्रा द मिसलेनियस एजेंट्स यूज आर प्रिजर्वेटिव एज पैराबेंस एंटी ऑक्सीडेंट्स एज बी एच ए बी एच टी टोकोफ्रिल एटसेट्रा एंड फ्लेवरिंग एजेंट्स लाइक सिनेमोनियल एंड स्पियरमेंट ऑयल एटसेट्रा ना इवेल्यूएशन ऑफ लिपस्टिक्स इवेल्यूएशन मीन्स होता है उसका मूल्यांकन लिपस्टिक का मूल्यांकन किन किन आधार पर किया जाता है किस तरह से वो किन टेस्टों से गुजर कर मार्केट में आता है आप तक ये देखते हैं ये होता है इवेल्यूएशन ऑफ लिपस्टिक्स द इवेल्यूएशन स्टडीज आर इम्पॉर्टेंट इन ऑर्डर टू डिटरमाइन द एफिशियंसी स्टेबिलिटी एंड द कंसिस्टेंसी ऑफ द फिनिश प्रोडक्ट्स द इवेल्यूशन टेस्ट फॉर द लिपस्टिक्स आर एस फॉलोज जो पहला टेस्ट है वो है मेल्टिंग पॉइंट डिटर्मिनेशन टेस्ट द डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ मेल्टिंग पॉइंट इज डन इन ऑर्डर टू डिटरमाइन द स्टोरेज कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट द इंसाइटिंग पॉइंट ऑफ लिपस्टिक बेस शुड बी बिटवीन सिक्सटी टू सिक्सटी फाइव डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड इन ऑर्डर टू एवॉइड द सेंसेशन ऑफ फ्रिक्शन और ड्राइनेस ड्यूरिंग एप्लीकेशन द मैथड ऑफ डिटर्मिनेशन इज नोन एज कैपलरी ट्यूब मैथड एक ऐसा मैथड जिससे हम लिपस्टिक के इवेल्यूशन कर सकें जिससे उसका मेल्टिंग पॉइंट का डिटरमाइन कर सकें एक ऐसे मैथड को मैं डिस्क्राइब करती हूँ जो पहला है वो है कैपिलरी ट्यूब मैथड इन दिस मैथड अबाउट फिफ्टी ग्राम ऑफ लिपस्टिक इज टेकन एंड इज इंसर्टेड इन टू अ ग्लास कैपिलरी ट्यूब ओपन एट बोथ एंड्स द कैपिलरी ट्यूब इज आइस कूल्ड फॉर अबाउट अवर्स एंड देन प्लेस इन अ बीकर कंटेनिंग हॉट वाटर एंड अ मैग्नेटिक स्टीरर द टेम्परेचर एट विच मटेरियल स्टार्ट मूविंग थ्रू द कैपिलरी इज सेट टू बी द मेल्टिंग पॉइंट टेम्परेचर एंड अदर इंपॉर्टेंट पैरामीटर इज द ड्रूप पॉइंट विच डिटरमाइन द टेम्परेचर एच विच प्रोजेक्ट प्रोडक्ट स्टार्ट ऊजिंग आउट ऑफ द ऑयल एंड इट बिकम्स फ्लैट एंड आउट द मेल्टिंग पॉइंट शुड बी हायर दैन द ड्रूप पॉइंट विच डिटरमाइन द सेफ हैंडलिंग एंड स्टोरेज ऑफ फिनिश्ड प्रोडक्ट्स सेकेंड टेस्ट इज ब्रेकिंग लोड पॉइंट टेस्ट This test is done in order to determine the strength and hardness of the lipstick. In this method, the lipstick is placed in horizontal position, one inch from the base, and weights with increasing loads are attached to it. The weight at which the lipstick starts breaking, known as the breaking load point, the test shall be carried out in specific condition and at about twenty-five degree temperature. Third one is the determination of thixotropic character. This is a test for determining the uniformity in viscosity of base. The instrument used for the determination of thixotropic character is known as pentrometer. The microbiological test, the test is carried out in order to determine the extent of contamination either from the raw materials or mold. The test involves the plating of known as mass of sample onto different culture media for the growth of microorganism. and incubating them for a specific period of time the extent of contamination can be estimated by counting the number of colonies 
the second next test is for rancidity the oxidation of oils such as castor oil and many other ingredients may result in bad odor and taste and also result in sticky product the test for rancidity can be done by using hydrogen peroxide and determining its peroxide number now the test for application force this is a test to determine the force to be applied during application in this method two lipsticks are cut to obtain flat surfaces which are then placed one above other a smooth paper is placed between them which is attached to a dynamometer to determine the force required to pull the paper indicates the force application storage stability this test is done in order to determine the stability of the product during storage next test is the stability to oxidation the oxidation characteristics of the finished product are determined in order to check the stability of the product to oxidation the extent of oxidation can be determined by peroxide number of product after exposure or substance to oxygen for a specific period of time now the next test is for determination of surface characteristic the study of surface property of the product is carried out in order to check the formation crystal on the surface or the contamination by microorganisms or formation of the wrinkles and the exudation of liquids last test is for determination of color dispersion the test is done in order to determine the uniform dispersion of color particle the size of the particle is determined by the microscopic studies and it should be not more than 50 microns to pyare bachcho dekha aapne किस तरह से किसी एक कॉस्मेटिक को बनाया जाता है उसका फॉर्मूलेशन क्या होता है और उसको किस तरह से एवेल्यूएशन करके मार्केटिंग करके प्रोडक्ट आप तक पहुंचाया जाता है इसी तरह से और भी बहुत सारे कॉस्मेटिक प्रोडक्ट हैं जिनके फॉर्मूलेशन और इवोल्यूशन के बारे में मैं एक एक करके आपको बताते जाऊँगी तो दूसरा हमारा प्रोडक्ट है द सेकेंड कॉस्मेटिक प्रोडक्ट इज शैम्पू शैम्पू कैन बी defined as a preparation of a surfactant in suitable form liquid solid or powder which when used under the condition specified will remove surface grease dirt and skin debris from hair shaft and scalp without affecting adversely the hair scalp or health of the user shampoo leave the hair fragrant soft lustrous and manageable the formulation of a shampoo should have special capabilities like minimizing eye sting controlling dandruff or imparting appealing fragrance to gain more favorable acceptance from particular segments of the population there are variety of forms and types of shampoos available in the market due to its unusual composition and their combination such as children's and infant shampoo shampoo for dry oily and normal hairs shampoo for men etc based on their consistency they are as follows there are many types of shampoos like clear liquid shampoos liquid cream shampoos cream shampoos gel shampoos powder shampoos aerosol shampoos which are of foam type special shampoos etc now here we can see the formulation of shampoo the formula of shampoo contains the following ingredients ingredient examples are first it contains surfactants surfactants are of four types anionic surfactants which is alkyl sulfates and alkyl ether sulfate non ionic surfactant which is alkanol alkanolamides third is cationic surfactants which is alkyl amines and alkyl imidazolines fourth is amphoteric surfactant which is acyl amino acids second ingredient is used is foam boosters which includes mono ethanolamides lauryl amides DEA and cocoa amide DEA third used is germicide and anti dandruff agent which is which includes benzene alkolium alconium chloride cetrimide selenium sulfide cadmium sulfide etc the fourth ingredient used is conditioning agent which includes lanolin egg and amino acid next ingredient used is pearlescent agent which includes 4 methyl 7 diethyl amino cumarin 4 methyl 5 7 dihydro cumarin the sequestrants used are edta citric acid and tripohypophosphate 
द थिकनेस यूज आर एल्जीनेट्स पॉलीविनिल एल्कोहल एंड मेथिल सेल्यूलोज द परफ्यूमिंग एजेंट यूज आर हर्बल फ्रूट्स और फ्लोरल फ्रेगरेंस द प्रिजर्वेटिव यूज आर पैरा हाइड्रोक्सिल बेंजोइक एसिड फेनिल मर्क्यूरिक नाइट्रेट द कलर्ड यूज आर एफ डी एंड सी डाई नाउ वी विल सी द इवेल्युएशन ऑफ शैम्पू द स्टेप्स ऑन विच द शैम्पूज आर इवेल्युएटेड अकॉर्डिंग टू द रेगुलेटरी अथॉरिटीज सच ईच एंड एवरी बैच ऑफ शैम्पूज मस्ट बी इवेल्युएटेड प्रियर टू मार्केटिंग इवेल्युएशन इज अ मेजर ऑफ एक्टिविटी एंड सेफ्टी इट ऑल्सो नोटिफाइज द टॉक्सिसिटी इफ नाउ अड इज मोस्ट ऑफ द शैम्पूज आर प्रिपेयर फ्रॉम सिंथेटिक डिटर्जेंट्स हैंड्स इवेल्युएशन बिकम्स एन एसेंशियल फैक्टर हाउ एवर देयर इज ऑल्सो नीड टू एवेल्युएट हर्बल शैम्पू since it may contain natural ingredient which are liable to contamination so the shampoos are evaluated on the following aspect that is the evaluation of safety and second was one is the evaluation of antimicrobial property so first of all the evaluation of safety safety is an important aspect which must first and foremost parameter of evaluation as stated earlier the shampoos are made from synthetic detergents which are liable to irritate skin scalp and eye hence it becomes essential to evaluate the safety of a shampoo overall the shampoo must be non toxic and non irritative the safety is usually evaluated in terms of toxicity that is if the preparation is found to be non toxic then it is regarded as safe and vice versa however the toxicity is determined by using dry taste which suggest two separate methods for testing skin and eye toxicity respectively the methods are as follows the first one is the skin toxicity test the steps involved in this test are as follows a set of 6 albino rabbits are selected they should weigh about 2 kg on the skin of each rabbit a round patch is made by removing hair dilute preparation that is 8 to 10% of the shampoo is usually applied onto the patches of a rabbits The shampoo is allowed to react for a period of three to four hours. After that, it is removed completely from the skin. After efficient washing, the skin is examined for any adverse reactions such as erythema, edema, etc. Based on the result obtained, the shampoo is considered as either safe or toxic. <coughs> like same as skin toxicity test, eye toxicity test is also done. the steps involved in this test are as follows a set of 6 adult albino rabbits are selected they must weigh about 2 kg one eye of each rabbit is considered as test eye and another as control eye to each of the 6 test eye eyes of 6 rabbits the product the shampoo is applied washing is done after 20 seconds with 200 ml of tap water the eyes are rewashed after 5 minutes and then after 24 hours the control i are also washed on the first day and then after 24 hours the test eyes are observed at 1 24 48 48 and 72 hours respectively they are also examined on 7th and 14th day the product is said to be toxic if there is development of iris and corneal lesions which remains for more than 7 days now the next evaluation is of antimicrobial activity the shampoos are liquid or viscous preparations they are liable to microbial growth hence preservative is usually added to prevent midi growth the added preservative should have following properties it should be non toxic it should be compatible with other ingredients it should be effective at low concentration it should be effective against wide variety of microorganisms however all the above points are considered prior to the selection of preservative evaluation of preservative usually involves the study of antimicrobial activity and it is generally done by using a method called as challenge study according to this study the product is said to be preserved when it does not support microbial growth even after repeated attacks of various microorganism now the next cosmetic product i will describe here is powder powders are considered as one of the most important products of the skin care preparation they are used widely by both men and women for face and body care various types of powders are body powder face powders compact medicated powders 
which are used for prickly heat purposes and preventing microbial growth on the surface of the skin deodorant powders and food powders for treatment purposes powders have different physical properties when compared to the liquid preparation they have very fine particle size which helps in producing large surface area per unit weight this helps in proper dispersion of powder which covers the large surface area of the body talcum powders are the protective preparation against mechanical stress which act as skin lubricants and cooling agent face powder a face powder is basically a cosmetic product which has its prime functions the ability to complement skin color by imparting velvet like finish it enhances the appearance of the skin by masking the shine due to secretion of sebaceous and sweat gland the compact powder it is a type of face powder compressed in a cake and applied with a powder puff it is more popular because of its ease in application storage and convenience its formulation is same as face powder except it contains more concentration of powders now we can see the formulation of powders ingredients used in the formulation of powders are properly studied before selection their character role and quality are taken into consideration as they have effect on the finished product the ingredients used should be of good quality ingredients example the ingredients used in the formulation of powders are first one is the covering materials titanium dioxide zinc oxide zinc stearate kaolin magnesium stearate and rice starch second materials used is adhesive materials the adhesive materials used are talc magnesium and calcium salt of myristic acid zinc stearate third ingredient used is slip materials that is talc magnesium stearate aluminium hydrosilicate the fourth ingredient used is adsorbent materials that is colloidal kaolin starch bentonite the ingredients used next is pitch like finish materials which includes rice starch maize starch powdered silk etc the next material which imparted frosted its look gualin bismuth oxychloride the seventh materials used is coloring materials which is iron oxide ultramarine organic lakes and pigments the last ingredient used is perfumes flowery fragrances or synthetic odor now how the evaluation of powder is done the evaluation is carried out in order to know the quality of the finished product general test include determination of contents in the formulation along with the stability test this is carried out to know whether the product remains stable for prolonged period of time that is the shelf life other tests are also carried out they are first one is shade test in this test the variations of color shade is determined and controlled it is carried out by spreading the powder sample on a white paper and appearance is observed which is compared with the standard one another method involves applying powder sample and standard one with the help of a puff on the skin and then comparing it the puff used to perform this test is also used for the final product evaluation of color is carried out by using artificial light second test is the color dispersion test in this test a sample of powder is spread on a white paper and with the help of a magnifying glass segregation or bleeding of the color is observed the color should be properly distributed in the powder base of the formulation the third test is the payoff test this test is carried out to check the adhesive property of powders with the puff this test is mainly carried out on the compact powders now the next test is pressure test for compaction purpose in compact powders pressure required uniform pressure should be applied to avoid in formation formation of air pockets which will lead to either breaking or cracking of compact powders this is because low pressure will make the compact powder soft whereas high pressure will lead to the formation of hard cake with the help of penetrometer uniformity of hardness of the cake is checked this is done by taking the reading at different points on compact powder and then comparing them 
now <coughs> breakage test in this test the compact powders are allowed to fall on a wooden surface from a height of about 8 to 10 inches this is carried out several times and then checking is done to see whether any breakage has occurred on compact powder if the compact powder remains unbroken then it shows the resistance to travel and normal handling by the users next test is the flow property test this test is carried out on body powders to determine their flow property from the container upon usage this in turn helps in easy application of powder to skin in this method angle of repose of powder is measured by allowing the powder product to fall on a plate through a funnel then the height and the radius of hip formed is measured and even the time taken for the powder to fall is noted seven the particle size determination with the help of microscope sieve analysis or by utilizing other techniques and instruments particle size of powder product is determined next test is abrasive character abrasive character of powder can be determined by rubbing the powder on a smooth surface of the skin then with the help of a microscope the effects of powder are studied last one is the moisture content moisture content present in the powder can be determined by using the following formula that is moisture content percentage is equal to weight of water in sample divided by weight of weight of dry sample into 5 this is usually carried out by using various suitable analytical methods these methods are also suitable for determining limits for color now one of again the most favorite cosmetic product of girls that is nail paints nail lacquers nail lacquers or nail paints may be defined as viscous or semi liquid preparation that are intended for the decoration of the nails of the fingers and toes nail lacquers from the most commonly used the most popular type of manicure preparation nail polishes are quite distinct from those of nail lacquers and are regarded as a type of manicure preparation that produces a gloss by means of huffing action the action is mainly by causing abrasion on the surface of the nail and secondly by drawing more blood into the capillaries of the nail now what is the formulation of nail lacquers or which are the ingredients which prepare nail lacquers the formation of an efficient nail polish may be based on the selection of a proper and an essential ingredient the ingredients involved in the formation of a good variety of nail polish should be as follows the ingredient example should contain first of all the film forming agents which is nitrocellulose ethyl cellulose and vinyl polymers the second substance is resinous substance which includes aryl sulfonamide formaldehyde the third substance includes dissolving solvent which is ether ethyl acetate amyl acetate and butyl acetate the dissolving solvent or co solvent includes ethyl alcohol and butyl alcohol the plasticizing agents include d butyl phthalate and n butyl stearate the coloring agent includes 5% titanium oxide nacreous and pearly pigments contain guanine crystal and other miscellaneous substances include suspending agent and perfume rays now how the nail lacquers are evaluated before you get the product in market the various method required for the evaluation of nail polishes are as follows first one is the test for non volatile content the test is done in order to check the quantity of the non volatile content in the preparation the method is known as dish method and involves a simple process described below as the sample is spread on a flat plate as a circle 8 cm in diameter the quantity is weighed and kept in a oven at a temperature of 105 degree for 1 hour the quantity of substance remaining on the plate is weighed and at this substance is non volatile content now the second test is the rate of drying this test is done in order to check the rate of evaporation of the preparation it involves a simple process in which the film is applied with an applicator to a completely non porous surface it is kept at 25 degree centigrade and 50% rh and the time required to dry is noted by touching it with finger when no matter is adhered to the fingertip 
then the product is said to be completely dried now the third test is color of the product the color of the product is tested by comparing it with a standard color this can be done by applying the standard color on one nail and then prepared product on the adjacent nail from this comparison the contrast in the colors can then be easily noted now next test is for smoothness of the film the smoothness of the film is most important characteristics of the film the surface property can be studied by the microscopic analysis the film should not contain any foreign matter or particles of the coating material it should also be free from the orange peel effect when seen under microscope now the estimation of gloss the gloss of the product can be determined by the use of an instrument that works on the principle of reflection of light now the next test is test for the hardness of the film the test is done in order to measure the extent of hardness of the substance it is done by spreading the film on a glass plate and then drying it for 48 hours of 25 degree centigrade it is then further dried at 70 degree centigrade for 2 hours it is then cooled at 25 degree centigrade for 48 hours the hardness is then checked by applying mechanical force externally now the next test is for adhesive property this is done in order to measure the extent of adhesion of the film with adhering material this is done by following method the film is spread on metal surface and allowed to settle for some time the adhesion character is then determined by measuring the mechanical force applied externally to remove the film now the next test is for resistance to abrasion this is done by applying mechanical abrasive forces externally on the film surface the surface characteristics of the film before and after the application of abrasive force are then studied test for resistance to water permeability this is a measure of resistance of the film towards absorption of water which is done as follows a continuous film is spread on the surface of a metal plate the plate is then immersed in the water the weight of the film before and after the immersion into water is noted an increase in the weight is calculated the lesser the increase in weight the greater is the water resistance now the next test is for test for viscosity it is the most important parameter that determines the evenness of the application the viscosity can be measured by using brookfield's viscometer it can be easily carried out by checking the flow of product from the applicator and comparing it with standard product now the last test is for test for stability it is the measure of long lasting ability of the product it can be done by using the acceleration stability test now the next cosmetic product which i am highlighting is creams creams are semi solid emulsions which contain mixtures of oil and water their consistency varies between solids and liquids self and unguent preparations in earlier days led to the development of cleansing and cold creams with the help of additives such as emulsifying agents and newer techniques the preparation of creams has become easy now classification the creams are classified according to their functions as cleansing and cold creams foundation and vanishing creams etc now the cleansing and cold creams they are used for the purpose of removing makeup surface grime and secretions of the skin from the face and throat respectively the formulation of these creams are it is an oil in water type of emulsion in which high percentage of mineral oil is present this mineral oil helps in imparting cleansing property phase inversion takes place due to evaporation of water after the creams are rubbed on the skin the phase inversion that is water in oil type help in imparting the cleansing action now we can see the formulation it includes mineral oil 28 grams isopropyl myristate 14 grams acetoglyceride for lustrous that is 2.5 gram petroleum jelly as a lubricant 7.5 gram b wax as emollient 15 gram borax as buffer 1 gram water 32 grams preservative quantity as required and perfume odor quantity as required 
Now second type of cream is foundation and vanishing cream. The foundation makeup, as you all know, we have to give the base for makeup. That is from foundations. Foundation makeup cream helps in overcome the trouble associated with foundation creams. That is, application of foundation cream is a two-step process where it acts as a base to hold the powder makeup. These two steps can be avoided by using foundation makeup. These are available in various forms especially the liquid foundation makeup is popular because it is easy to apply compared to loose powders and it also provides smooth appearance to the skin. Surfactants present in the foundation makeup may allow the pigments or colors to penetrate into hair follicles and fissures present in the epidermis of the skin Hands should be completely removed after application. Now we can see the formulation. It contains Lenit Wax 8 grams, Stearic Acid as Lubricant 8 grams, Water 64 gram, Glycerin as Humectants 10 grams, Powder for Base 1 gram, Color as per quantity required, Perfume also as required, Preservative also as required. There are many types of creams. The third type is Night and Massage Creams. Fourth is Hand and Body Creams. And the fifth one is the All Purpose Cream, which is also used as Cleansing and Cold Creams. Now, we can see the evaluation of creams. How it is evaluated the creams are before it is bring to the market. Due to the use of number of additives, it is necessary to evaluate the effectiveness of the skin products. Evaluation is carried out by two methods. They are in vitro methods or in vivo methods. In vitro methods. Tests are carried out to know the performance of the products. These tests also help in evaluating new product concept. Various instruments have been developed by the investigators to know the effect of temperature and humidity on the skin. Since the softness of the skin is directly related to the water content present in it, the effects of temperature and humidity on the skin are studied by observing the changes in the mechanical properties of the stratum corneum. The instruments help in evaluating moisturizing capacity of the products and screening of flaw materials used in the formulation. The various techniques of instruments used in vitro method are tensile strength tester, Hargens gas bearing electrodynamometer, occlusive potential of ingredients, gravimetric analytical method, thermoanalytical method and electrical method etc. Now in vivo method, the vivo methods are helpful in providing information on hydration or moisturization process of the skin. The various methods are transpirometry, scanning electron microscopy, optical microscopy and macrophotography, skid friction and the last one is sensitivity test. So these are the evaluation, evaluation tests for the creams. Now the next cosmetic ingredient which I am taking you to explain is toothpaste. Introduction. The toothpaste are the dentrifies such as toothpaste, tooth powders and tooth gels are meant for cleaning the surface of the teeth by removing the food debris and plaque adhered to the surface of the teeth which is the main cause for tooth problems. They should possess the following characteristic. First one is, they should not produce any gritty sensation in the mouth. Second, they should possess good abrasive property. Third one is, they should lead to the incompatibilities and should be compatible with other ingredients. Next one is, they should be harmless to the enamel and the abrasive property should be under limits. Last one is, they should provide a good shine to the enamel. Now the formulation, the ingredients which are used in preparing toothpaste or tooth powders are the toothpaste are the most popular form of dentrifices. They include the following ingredients which determine the quality and efficiency of toothpaste. The first agent responsible for cleansing XNR, precipitated calcium carbonate or phosphates of calcium. The second ingredient as polishing agent or abrasive agents are dental graded silica, polymers of silica and trihydrated alumina. The foaming agents and surfactant used are sodium lauryl sulfate, sodium lauryl sarcosinate, agents responsible for the formation of toothpaste sorbitol, 
glycerin, humectants, propylene glycol, etc. The gelling agents or binding agents used are sodium carboxymethyl cellulose or cellulose ethers. The agents responsible for improving palatability are sodium saccharin chloroform. Sweetening agents are as cinnamon bark, flavoring agent as pearmint oil and miscellaneous agents as coloring agents, whitening agent, preservatives and therapeutic agents. Now here we can see a formula for toothpaste for a quantity of 100 gram. It contains calcium carbonate 28 gram at, as an adhesive agent, sodium sulfate, sulfate as surfactant 0.5 gram, glycerin as humectants 11 gram, gum tragacanth as binding agent 0.75 grams, water 9.7 gram, saccharin sodium as sweetening agent 0.05 gram, flavor as per quantity required, preservative as per quantity required. Now the evaluation process of toothpaste. The quality control studies and evaluation tests are necessary in order to check the purity, consistency and efficiency of the product. The specific evaluation test for dentrifices are as follows. First one is the test for abrasive character. The cleansing action of dentrifices mainly depends on their abrasive property. The abrasion should not lead to any damage to the enamel and hence the test for checking the abrasive property has been done by the extracted teeth. The teeth are brushed by mechanical means with paste or powder and the effect of dentrifices on the teeth is studied by comparing the result and before and after brushing. Second one is the determination of particle size. Particle size determination is important as the cleansing nature and abrasive property of the dentrifice mainly depends on the particle size. The particle size can be determined by using microscopical techniques or by involving the method of sieving. Now the third test is for cleansing property which is the most important. This test is done in order to determine the cleaning ability of the dentrifice. The tooth cleansers such as powders and paste are brushed onto a polyester film and the change in reflectance character of the lacquer coating is measured. The in vivo method involves brushing of the teeth with dentrifice for two weeks and determination of the condition of the teeth before and after brushing and comparing them by means of photographs. Determination of consistency of the product. This test is done in order to determine the consistency of the product for the maintenance of its flow property all throughout its storage period. The consistency of the product mainly depends on the theological properties such as particle size, viscosity, etc. Now the next test is for determination of pH. A 10% solution of the paste in water is made and the pH of the dispersion is made by using a pH meter. The pH should be in the range of 6.8 to 7.4 in order to maintain the consistency of the product. Now the next test is of foaming character. This test for the foaming character is applicable only to foaming tooth powders and paste. In this test, specific amount of the product is mixed with a known amount of water. The solution is then shaken sometimes in order to produce foam. The foam produced is then collected and studies on its nature, washability and stability are carried out. Now the next test is for determination of volatile matter and the moisture content. This test is done in order to determine the amount of volatile matter and moisture content in the product. In this method, a specified amount of the product is taken and is kept for drying till a constant weight is obtained. The weight of the product before and after drying is measured and the loss in weight is calculated which determines the percentage of moisture content and volatile matter. Now the next test is for special ingredient. The use of therapeutic ingredients may lead to certain incompatibilities and hence specific tests are done in order to determine the effect of the specific ingredients such as antiseptics, enzymes etc. Now the last test is for heavy metals. The test is done in order to check the presence of any heavy metals such as arsenic and lead which may lead to toxicity. The occurrence of this metal can be avoided by carrying out the limit test for heavy metal for raw materials which may reduce usage of these materials. Now the cosmetic ingredient which I am taking now 
is hair dye or hair colorant a variety of hair colors are observed between the people living in east and people living in west the agents that are responsible for variety of hair colors are only two which are pheomelanins and eumelanins pheomelanins impart different shades of red and yellow whereas eumelanins impart different shades of dark and brown and black a variety of hair colors are observed due to the following parameters now this is the classification of hair colorant the major classification is as follows it is classified into five types the first one is temporary hair colorant the second is semi permanent hair colorant or direct dyes the third includes oxidative dyeing system which includes semi permanent hair colorant and permanent hair colorant fourth one includes gradual gradual hair colorants and the fifth one as natural <coughs> dyes now as we all know the hair dyes exist in many forms powder forms crayons forms oil forms etc now the powder formulation they are mostly used in theoretical makeup and masquerades the powder consists of dye stuff and acid like citric acid or tartaric acid they are available in sachet now its formula it contains certified color 5 g and tartaric acid as buffer 95 g now the crayon formulation these temporary hair colorants are applied between the applications of permanent hair colorants they color the new growing hair they are available in many shades of color the composition of crayons is soap waxes dyes or pigments now its formula and quantity for 100 g it contains stearic acid as an ionic surfactant 15 g triethanolamine as surfactant 7 g beeswax 50 g carnauba wax 13 g ozokerite wax 7 g glyceryl monosilicate as surfactant 6 g tragant gum 2 g and color as per quantity required evaluation of the hair colorant the following test are carried to carried out to evaluate hair colorants the two tests are there the sensitization test and the toxic effect test the sensitization test the test is carried out on an animal skin the colorants applied on the skin and is kept under observation for 24 hours if no reaction occurs then the colorant is said to be non sensitizing or non irritant histopathological study is carried out as per requirement the toxic effect test the toxic effects are studied in animals to know about the long term effects of other preparation now the next cosmetic material i am explaining to you is liquid soaps the liquid soaps are generally defined as aqueous solutions of the salts or fatty acid originally they are obtained by saponifying the natural animal and vegetable fats and oils with alkali as sodium and potassium hydroxide but now alkyl amines are used as alkali for example triethanolamine is most commonly used it forms a stable foam and less strong alkali reaction than sodium and potassium alkali production of good liquid soap by total saponification of neutral fats is an art which require much experience the soaps prepared from fatty acids with fewer than 10 carbons coconut oil palm oil castor oil etc in the chain gives two two soluble soap to form acceptable suits or to so acceptable detergency whereas the soaps of fatty acids with more than 20 carbons are too insoluble to function effectively at normal temperature commonly used soaps and have ph range from 7 to 10 now here we can see the formulation of soaps which includes coconut oil naoh water stearic acid glycerin papaya perfume and crude enzyme pepin now the evaluation of soap foaming retention testing to determine the foaming propensity a 1 g portion of its soap formulation was dissolved in 10 ml water distilled and tap water by minimum heat that is below 60 degree and 5 ml of the resultant solution was transferred into a 10 ml test tube the test tube was shaken for 1 minute using a vortex test tube mixer in this time taken for the soap solution to deform and triplicate test were recorded 
now next test is for ph determination the ph value of 1 gram sample of each soap formulation dissolved in 10 ml of distilled water was determined in triplicates with a digital ph meter now the next test is for emolliency test emolliency test in evaluates occlusiveness of soap formulation a 2 gram portion of each soap formulation was smeared onto the surface of white sheets of paper over approximately 5 cm square surface area and left to stand onto laboratory shelf for 24 hours after which the degree of translucency was graded into a three level ranking mild moderate or strong translucency now we will study about the face pack after shave and eyeliners face packs <laughs> face packs are the preparation which apply topically to facial area having high affinity to keratin and remain on the skin surface it is used for the purpose of achieving tightening sensation and a cleaning effect in the area of application it adheres to skin surface and easily rubbed off these are high viscosity or paste forms exemplified by the clay facial packs and once fashionable mud packs in general they contain colloidal clay kaolin or other suitable solids dispersed in a liquid vehicle the desired plasticity determined by concentration of solids now after shave lotions after shave lotions relieve the feeling of tautness and discomfort caused by shaving it is used to refresh cool the skin smooth minor irritations and impart the feeling of well being there are varieties of after shave lotions available in market that is clear lotions stick lotions gels creams and emulsified lotions some other types of after shave preparations are also available like powders pencils alum blocks aerosols etc such formulation have one or more special characteristics which dictate the physical form of product and relative efficiency when used after different types of shaves the last cosmetic product which i am going to describe is eyeliners eyeliners it is the oldest and most extensively used cosmetics for enhancing the eyes it is a preparation which harmonizes the shades of mascara originally it is liquid dispersion but now as the development proceeds it is successfully replaced by emulsified product that is cream or cake this preparation is formulated in such a way that can apply in a thin line cannot cake and water resistance now a day shiny and matte eyeliners are available in the market these various types of eyeliners are available that is lustrous liquid eyeliner cake or frosted cake eyeliner etc the formulation of eyeliner consists of pigments or dyes waxes oils gums esters preservatives polyscent and perfumes etc high shine eyeliner is made by using material as latex that is cosmetically safe or carboset with addition of plasticizers such as glycerol polyvinyl alcohol and polyvinyl acetate etc the coloring agent which are most commonly used are carbon black iron and chromium oxide pigments carmine nf and cochineal etc which are fda certified pigments to achieve lighter and pastel shades titanium oxide or zinc oxide is employed with pigments so dear friends viewers and students hope you find it a very useful for your syllabus and if you have any doubt you can ask me please do subscribe my channel